Hello again, Terra Mystica fans, and welcome to this video where I'm going to discuss the bonus cards in the game and how to play them. So we need to know that there are 10 bonus cards in the game, which you select one of um, before each round, and you will exchange that for a new one um, for, for each round that you play throughout the six rounds of the game. Now, in a four-player game, um, the 10 bonus cards won't all be available to you. Three will be removed, so leaving seven for you to choose from. So the first time I would look at the bonus cards would actually be to um, help me in my choice of factions. So, uh, but we'll discuss that later on. First, I want to go through the bonus cards one by one and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each one. So bonus card one here provides a dig action during the turn, not the turn, during the round that you hold it. And it will also provide you an extra two coins for this round. Now, this is an extremely valuable card um, really early on in the game. And um, a lot of factions would choose this when it's available for the first round um, because digging is expensive. Um, a lot of people will be fighting for the dig power actions, especially the double dig power action in the first round. So having this bonus card is really going to give you a head start in uh, especially the territorial battle that tends to ensue um, right at the beginning of the game. Um, and also, of course, the two coins is very, very welcome. Later on in the game, it uh, tends to become less useful, um, not necessarily because um, it in itself is not useful, but players tend to have already developed an economy and perhaps are more likely to have either upgraded their digs and be able to dig far more cheaply, or their eyes are more turning to the scoring bonuses that are available um, later, well, become more valuable later on in the game, and I'll discuss that very soon. So bonus card two provides you with four coins, and, and this is an, an, an extra income before the round of four coins, so you can use the four coins in the round that you hold this card. And you also have a bonus action which provides you with one step up any of the cult tracks. Now, obviously, the coins are very, very useful, especially in this game where um, you find that many factions are short of coins. The economy tends to provide a lot of workers, but fewer coins. But the one step up a cult can be useful at the beginning and at the end of the game. And at the beginning of the game, especially in round one, you might find that you're um, at step three in a cult. But at the end of the round, there's a bonus for being on step four or maybe just one step higher than where you are. And so having this will just allow you to um, perhaps get a cult bonus, whereas if you didn't have it, you wouldn't get it. And then later on in the game, it can be very, very valuable um, because this extra action is not particularly valuable in itself, but what it does allow you to do is stay in, stay active in the round one turn longer or one turn fewer than you, you otherwise might be. For example, if you wanted to pass out of the round to get another card for the following round that had a, a very high value and you knew that somebody else likely get it before you if you didn't pass out, then not taking this action will not matter so much. But if you, again, you wanted to stay longer in the games and, and wait for another player to pass and relinquish a very valuable, say a scoring bonus card later in the game, then you have an extra action to take um, to keep yourself in the round so that you're in the running to grab a scoring tile. Um, bonus card three is fairly simple, the six coins. And as I said, a lot of factions struggle with coin income. And so having this um, is, is very valuable, um, but fairly self-explanatory. So we'll move straight on to bonus card four. Now there are, well, looking at the coin bonuses, there are four bonus cards that provide coins in the game. But
But bonus card four provides power. And it's one of three bonus cards we can see here, bonus four, bonus five, and bonus 10 that provide power income, allowing you to move three of your power tokens from one bowl to the next. And this also provides um, an upgraded shipping level for the, the round that you hold it. So this is especially valuable early on in the game. Um, all three of these, in fact, because um, we'll talk about the three power to start off with. Um, a lot of factions begin with, um, say, for example, nine power in bowl two and three power in bowl one. So uh, getting this can allow uh, these factions to get 12 power in bowl two. These factions are the engineers, the halflings, the mermaids, and the swarmlings. They all start with uh, three power in bowl one and nine power in bowl two. So if they were to grab um, before the first round, one of these three powers, they get the 12 power into bowl two, which puts them in pole position to grab the double dig power action, even if they have to burn six power to do that. It's still preferable to leech a little bit of power over into bowl three so that less power has to be burned to take those double dig. But you will find that um, a lot of players will get this or one of these three power bonus cards in order to take that double dig power action and get a territorial advantage on the board in the first round. And also this shipping upgrade uh, tends to be extremely valuable too, as, um, especially on the first round for certain factions. For example, the witches and the mermaids can get a lot of dwellings on the board with an extra, the extra reach, the um, upgraded uh, shipping level gives you. So you might find the witches will often take this, sometimes even the engineers to uh, do a double dig across a river. So uh, early in the game, this, uh, especially in the first round, certain factions will go for this. But another reason why this upgraded shipping power is valuable is Upgrading your shipping using your priest and four coins is actually uh, quite expensive. And um, as I said, the coin economy can be quite uh, tight with a lot of factions. So it's uh, useful to actually use those coins to build structures, for example, for example, trading posts that will give you a coin income rather than upgrading your shipping. So having this bonus tile allows you to uh, start building structures across a river and developing your towns without having to spend resources on upgrading shipping, which you can easily do later on in the game once you have your economy um, built. Um, another way to do this is to uh, build a bridge um, over the river and do that. Then the, the bridge will cost you three power. Um, so that's another way you will see players um, deal with the problem of the expensive shipping upgrades earlier in uh, for early in the game. But if you do use the bridge to uh, access across a river, do be careful that uh, another faction is not going to develop uh, the uh, hex that you've bridged over to before you get there. And that's actually happened to me on uh, one or two occasions. Um, it happened to me, I remember playing with the Swarmlings, and I was quite fortunate I still won the game uh, when that happened to me. Um, but yeah, so do be very careful of that. And so the next faction we can see is also, um, also has the three power, but it also has the one worker. So it tends to be more sought after than the shipping upgrade one because of course the one worker can contribute to um, uh, an, extra, an extra structure. So this is uh, very commonly picked very early in the game uh, to go for the double dig with a three, um, with a, with a three power boost and the extra worker can contribute to more structures. Uh, but later in the game, these uh, cards we've discussed so far tend to reduce in value because your economy is going to be developing and you can get more coins and more workers and you have your shipping levels already upgraded so they tend to uh, lose value and you also have a, perhaps a better power income natural power income from your structures 
So we should also see that there are one, two, three, four bonus six, seven, nine, and 10 are uh, point scoring bonuses. So if we look at the first one here, bonus card six, um, now obviously it provides two workers for you to use during that round, which is um, very useful. Um, it can be very useful even in round one. But this bonus card is becomes more valuable even right at the end of the game because you're more likely by that time to have your stronghold and or your sanctuary already built. And at the end of the round, when you hand in your um, bonus card or exchange it for a new one, you're going to get four points for each of these structures that you have. So if you have both of them built, you're going to get eight points, um, which is... Uh, very, very useful. So this, you might find that uh, a lot of players will pass out of a, a round early just to grab this. And the two workers do come in very handy. And this card is often picked even at, in round one for the two workers and the extra points by a lot of factions, especially when um, round one scoring bonus is for Stronghold and Sanctuary. A lot of people would choose factions that... Uh, like to build a stronghold on round one and then choose this bonus card, which does give um, a good benefit. Obviously, you have the points and the two workers, but they tend to overlook some other cards that perhaps could give you more of an advantage, even if you are building your stronghold. For example, the three power and one worker, the dig, or often the priest as well, which can get you the uh, spots in the cult, which we'll talk about very soon. But uh, yeah, this card is valuable right at the beginning of the game and right at the end too. Um, thinking about the Darklings, um, the Darklings tend to start with fewer work, well, they start with fewer workers than other factions. They have um, base, basically four workers, which allows you to build your um, temple two workers for the trading post and then two workers to upgrade that to a temple. Um, but then you haven't got any workers left to build any dwellings. So grabbing this, of course, is gonna give you the, the two workers and you already start the first round with a priest. So you can dig and um, get an extra dwelling on the board. Um, and if you are lucky enough to get the priest bonus action, you can get two dwellings on the board with it. Or you can even, if, you're, if you get enough leech, you can actually, with the Darklings, manage to get your Sanctuary out on the first round. So if you were to do that and you have this bonus card, you're going to get uh, four points for it as well. Moving on to bonus card seven, another um, point scoring bonus. This, this one, at the end of the round, when you hand in or exchange your bonus card, you're going to get two points for each trading post you have on the board at that time. So it's very important to bear in mind, don't upgrade um, trading posts if you hold this, if you want to score the two points from it. Um, don't upgrade your trading post to uh, um, a stronghold or to a temple, because then you're not gonna get the two points at the end of the round when you hand this in. Um, you also get a worker. Now this card tends to become valuable in especially the the last three rounds, or especially the last two rounds, where people tend to have uh, more trading posts on the board, but certainly not in round one. This is certainly not picked um, in round one or two. Um, but yes, uh, another, another card that people might consider passing out of the round early, if, especially if they're going to have four trading posts on the board, because that can score you eight points. Um, at the end of the round. Moving on to bonus card eight, we have the priest, which is very valuable early in the game and is often overlooked by beginner players. But if you look at the cult tracks, you can see that the first spots in the cult tracks allow you to move three spots up the cult rather than two. And if you grab this priest bonus card, um, you can grab one of those three spots and it's especially valuable when you can um, uh, get some 
income from your position on the cult track. So if you can get to step four and get a couple of workers or a dig or something like that, it's going to give you just that little edge over the competition. So this um, priest bonus card is especially valuable early in the game. If you're playing the Darklings, it's very valuable to you because it's going to give you an extra dig with two points and many other um, factions. If you're looking, as I said, to get a lead on those cult tracks, um, we'll pick this. Uh, later in the game, it tends to become less valuable simply because people tend to be going for the scoring tiles, the four scoring bonus cards by that time. Move on to bonus card nine. This gives you two coins, that's fairly simple. And also at the end of the round, it's gonna give you um, one point for each dwelling you have on the board. So again, be careful not to upgrade too many dwellings during the round. Um, because then you're not going to score the one point from it. This, again, becomes more valuable later on in the game as people have more dwellings on the board um, and they're less interested in developing their um, economies but want to score points from the economy. Um, so again, very, very important card, especially in the last couple of rounds. Now we move on to the final bonus card, bonus card 10. It gives three power, so um, of the three power bonus cards, this is, at the beginning of the game, the least valuable because um, this one, as I said, gives the shipping upgrade, which has um, the advantage I discussed earlier, and then the worker, which has obvious advantages. But this one has scoring, so perhaps early in the game, um, a lot of factions will not have a scoring level um, so we'll not be able to score any points from this. They will only be able to benefit from the three power. So they're more likely to choose one of the other two, especially bonus five. But later in the game, this come, becomes um, very highly valued. Most factions can upgrade their shipping to a maximum level of three. So can get nine victory points at the end of the round when they exchange this card. But it must be noted that the mermaids, their maximum shipping level is five. So if they hold this card at the end of the round, they're going to score on 15 points. And if they get this two or three times during the game, that's a lot of points. And I've won games without really, um, with only, uh, without really getting too many structures on the board, but just grabbing this tile um, and uh, getting a lot of points from that previously so this one to watch and if mermaids are going to grab this sometimes it pays to exit the round ahead of them just to stop them getting that 15 points and you try to get as uh, maybe a six or a nine points uh, bonus out of it so there we are so uh, bear in mind with the bonus cards there are 10 in total you're going to be choosing from seven so it's always good to know which three are not in the game and also uh, know there are four coin bonuses, three worker bonuses, and four scoring bonuses. So when you come to choose your seven, let's have a look at an, of an example set up here. Um, there'll be seven to pick and you can choose one. Um, the first time you're gonna look at it is when you come to pick your faction and uh, it's gonna sort of steer you in a direction to maybe a certain faction and steer you away from certain others. So if we were to look at the, the setup here, we can see that th uh, three of the four coin bonuses are available. The six coin is unavailable, so that's out of the game. Um, so a slightly low coin game, but nothing spectacular. We can also see that there's a worker here and a, a worker bonus card here. So pretty much okay when it comes to workers. And scoring wise, we have all four scoring bonus cards in the game. So it's likely to be a, um, a fairly high scoring game. But only one of the three power scoring bonuses. So that's really the main thing to to garner from looking at this uh, selection of bonus cards for this game. So we might be more inclined to choose a faction that can develop a stronger power income 
and then we would have more um, choice of the power actions over our opponents. So those um, factions tend to be the swarmlings that uh, when they build their stronghold get a good power income. Also um, the engineers who can build two temples and get I think it's five power income from that. And another faction to bear in mind is the Chaos Magicians. Now the Chaos Magicians, when they build a temple or their um, sanctuary, instead of getting one favor tile, they can grab two. And so they can take um, point scoring favors tiles along with favor tiles that uh, mitigate for the, um, the weakness in their economy. So in this case, um, they might want to go for say um, air two which gives four power and earth two which gives one power so they can um, develop their power income um, by getting favor tiles so there's three factions that you might want to uh, choose of course you're going to look at uh, what your opponents have chosen the, the opponents have chosen before you and also what the scoring tiles uh, set up is and then choose uh, sort of weigh the uh, pros and cons and choose the best. But just by looking at the bonus cards, we might choose one of those three factions, the uh, engineers, the chaos magicians, or the swarmlings. So let's have a look at another setup and see uh, what we can learn from that. So straight away, looking at these seven cards that will be available for this game, we can see all four of the coins are available. So we know um, that this could be um, a high, well, this is going to be a high coin game. And worker wise, we have two of the three. And the one that's missing is the, the one that provides uh, two workers with the uh, Sanctuary Stronghold scoring bonus. So we could say it's a slightly low worker game. And also um, slightly low power because two of the power bonus cards are missing. And we have uh, three of the four scoring bonus cards. But looking at this, the high coin game um, and slightly low worker game is what to, we should be considering. So a, a faction that can um, develop a good worker economy and doesn't um, may may need to. Um, benefit from extra coins is the one to pick. So we can think of, say, the witches. Uh, these would be factions that get a lot of dwellings onto the board very easily. So um, the witches and the mermaids get a lot of dwellings on the board very easily. Um, so, and also they do tend to struggle for coins, those two factions, at least when I play them. So uh, if you have more coins available in bonus cards, you're going to sort of um, make up for your weaknesses there. So that's what to look at with this. We look at another setup here and we can see, um, well, straight away, there's only one coin bonus card. So immediately we know it's a very low coin game. Now all the worker bonus cards are here. We have all the power bonus cards and all the scoring bonus cards. Um, obviously we can see the dig is missing, the, the dig bonus is missing, but uh, and then coin bonuses, the four and the six uh, coin bonus. So with a low coin economy, we need to be going for factions that have um, good coin income or require fewer coins. So thinking about the alchemists, the alchemists um, have a special ability which uh, means they can convert victory points to coins at any time. Now, maybe beginner players might be reluctant to do that, but early in the game, it pays for alchemists to convert um, lots of coins, um, in, sorry, lots of victory points into coins, as many as they need to get structures on the board. So going for the alchemists with a setup like this, um, depending on the uh, scoring cards available in each round, and of course what... Uh, your other players have picked. But looking at these bonus cards, the alchemists, and another faction to consider is the engineers. The reason to think about the engineers is they um, building structures for the engineers is a lot cheaper and requires far fewer coins. And so uh, fewer coins goes much a much longer way with the engineers. So uh, low coin game, think about the engineers. 
All right, so we'll go back and look at the 10 bonus cards available. Remember, there are four coin bonuses, three worker, four scoring, and three power. So I hope that helps you with uh, thinking about how to play the uh, bonus cards. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we can uh, discuss further. But uh, yeah, enjoy playing Terra Mystica and uh, I'll see you again soon.